Hey y'all, on today's vlog, we are going to be talking about, is it a vlog or a blog? I'm a millennial child. Today we're gonna to be talking about the time that <laughs> I just magically left the Tamron Hall show. So just so you all know, hi, I'm Nick. I'm a sweaty person right now, but normally I'm not sweaty. Um, and my career was in social media. Um, it still is, actually. And for a long time, I worked in celebrity social media. Isn't this so cute? Celebrity social media. So what that means is I would do social media for celebrities. Girl, get it together. Where are you going here? Um, and what that means is I would basically be in control of their social media accounts. And that means like publishing, coming up with concepts, um, strategizing, engaging as that celebrity. I can move so you guys can take a picture. No worries. Use your mouth. Um, it's like staring at me. Like, just can you say, excuse me? I want to take a picture of the statue. Okay, perfect. Do that. So then, okay, so I, my first job with all of that was with Queen Latifah. Amazing. Like, literally one of the nicest people, you guys. Like, so nice. She even, like, paid, well, I don't, they, like, billed it as her. But when we, like, got laid off or whatever because the show got canceled, she paid us out, like, two or three weeks extra. Like, they didn't have to do that. It was just, that was a gesture that I will never forget. And to be honest with you, like, it's not a lot of celebrities that do stuff like that. So when people do nice things and nice gestures, like, I I never take that for granted. Um, and also, she was just a nice person. Like, she literally would... <laughs> just be so quirky and so funny and so weird that we would just be laughing our butts off like for a majority of the time like it would just be so silly because that's how she is so then I left that job and then I was unemployed for a while and I got a job at BuzzFeed some of you guys probably recognize me from BuzzFeed videos child they had me doing all kind of stuff wearing thongs, dressing up in heels for the day, drinking all day long. Like, I cannot drink like I used to drink. They had us drinking so much at that job. Like, it was really kind of, like, crazy. Now that I think about it, like, that should not be legal. I'm pretty sure that isn't legal. <laughs> A lot of the things we did there were not legal. But legal enough to where they couldn't get sued, I guess. And we did, of course, sign, like, stuff. Um... Back to the statue. Rude tourists. Are we surprised? Um, so I guess I'm kind of being rude, but it's morning time and nobody's over here. Um, so worked at BuzzFeed for like three and a half years. And then I went over to MTV. MTV was just like a stepping stone. Like I literally just used that job because I knew I was going to start working for Tamron Hall at some point, and I'm going to tell you why. And this is why social media is a good thing, guys. Because you have to use it to your power. And that's what I did here. I saw this lady on the Today Show, and I said, what? She is funny. She's cute. She's quirky. Quirky is the word of the video. And she just knows how to have a good time. And the girls love her. Al Roker, I said the girls, but like Al Roker, I think was on third hour of today at that time and Willie Geist. And it was a good little trio. Now I don't know what's going on over there. Ain't nobody watching that. Ain't nobody watching no Today Show no, no more. It's not like it used to be. So anyway, so I start to watch in the Today Show third hour and I'm like, let me add this lady on Twitter. Because Twitter was hot at that moment. People were just like, it was just a lit, more and lit environment. This was before Donald Trump. Like, right when Donald Trump started talking about he was running against Hillary. That's how long. 2016, I think that is. Yeah. 
It's almost been 10 years since I knew this lady. And I'm going to call her this lady because you finna see why. And by the way, smash that subscribe button. If you're new here and you don't subscribe, subscribe. We talk all things here. Gay, fun, marketing, you know, the tea. So, I add this lady. She adds me back right away. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Because I've, I've added celebrities before. And celebrities usually don't add people back right away like that. Unless you're like, you know, talking with them or something like that. I never said nothing to her, really. She just added me back. It was so weird. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, let me slide in her DMs real quick. Oh, my God, a baby hummingbird. What? I've never seen a baby hummingbird before. Have you? It was, like, so tiny. Holy shit, that was weird. Um, And so... We started to getting in the DMs, chatting and cackling away like two queens. <laughs> Cause you know, she, the one thing about Tamron and I'll say is she is like a little fag hag. Like she is like a gay man. Like that's T. We can say what we want about her, but that's, that's T. So anyway, so we're just chatting away. It's like the Harvey Weinstein mess comes out. Well, no, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. She ends up getting fired from the Today Show. Whoops. You'll see why that is kind of funny in a second. Um, she gets fired from the Today Show. I hit her up. I'm like, damn, sis, what the hell happened? Like, and you know, she's being kind of coy because, you know, when you get fired from a job, it could be a myriad of things of why you got fired, especially in entertainment. Entertainment is so shady. It could be they don't like you anymore. It could be the quote unquote change of direction bullshit which i'll get to in a minute or it could just be you a problem person and i think that's ultimately probably why she got fired but anyway whatever you can read the headlines about her show and you can see what happened while you know i was there those first two years were crazy so anyway I messaged her and I'm like, girl, if there's any and, ever, any and ever an opportunity to work for you, I would love the opportunity. And she took that word. And I'll never forget. I actually did get an interview when, oh wait, let me back up. So Harvey Weinstein came out. That whole thing was going on. She actually was in talks with him to do the talk show. And obviously that fell apart when we found out that he was, you know, a rapist. I, can I say that here? And I obviously, of course, hit her up again. I was like, girl, what is going on, child? Because they were shopping the show at the time. So anyways, so that fell apart. She was looking for a new partner for the show with her agent, who I'm still friendly with. And they wound up at Disney. Disney bought the show. They were going to launch in 2019. Funny enough, I lived in L.A., but I always wanted to live in New York City. So I'm like, oh, shit, this is my time. Like, let me try to leverage my connection with Tamron to score an interview. So I wound up scoring an interview for the head of social. And child, they didn't know shit. They didn't know a damn thing. They didn't know a thing of how to do social media for a talk show. The executives themselves told me, we don't know nothing about social media. That's why we're hiring somebody like you. We don't have a clue. And Tamron trusted me. And I knew Tamron prior to that. We met a few times in person and I knew her. And it's very important when you're doing social media for a celebrity to have a relationship with them. Like, I didn't have a relationship with Queen Latifah like that. And honestly, it showed. If I would have had a better relationship with her, we would have had more access to her, which we would have been able to do more fun stuff on social media. But since we didn't have that access, it really did hurt. So anyway, we have more access to Tamron than normal because of my relationship with her. Okay, season one happens. Bill Getty and Talia Parkinson-Jones 
are the executive producers. And what's so funny? They are the executive producers and they are coming from like two different places. Like one is coming from Wendy Williams. <laughs> How you doing? And the other is coming from like fame on the view. Now, if you know anything about Tamron, she's a journalist. She's not the kind of talk show host that is Wendy Williams or is The View. Like, that's not really, like, her vibe. But those two, the whole time, were trying to create a show in those kinds of lenses. Well, that's not going to work. You're going to create conflict with the host. The host is going to wind up hating your ass. And it's going to create drama. And that's what happened. So, what do you call it happens? Good morning. COVID happens. Child. And you know, COVID is a mess. That little girl, she tore us up. She really fucked everything up. And so COVID comes around. We're stuck inside. Actually, I think they fired him before COVID. They fired Bill. Child, they, fi they straight up fired his ass. I'm like, Damn. Again, ruthless entertainment. I don't think they were getting along. There were rumors that he was like being racist. It was all kinds of rumors. So they fire him. Okay. He's gone. Now Talia, who literally did absolutely, I don't know what. I truly don't know what that lady did. She is now our executive producer and showrunner. We're all like confused because like, huh? How is it you? Like, you literally don't do nothing. So anyway, and she like, just, I don't know, whatever. I don't want to beat a black woman down, but it's true. So she has a job now, so good for her. So anyway, um, she ends up getting fired one day randomly. It's like, it's like, damn, we can't keep an exec. Then we get this crazy lady. I'm not even going to say her name because she's part of the issue here. We get this crazy lady. She comes in. She's also from The View. I'm like, what is the obsession with The View? I'm going to go this way because this man is acting weird. And I don't have time for it. Like, don't play with me. I'm not the one. Or the two, or the three, or the four, or the five, or the fucking sixth. <laughs> I'm really not. So, we get this lady. And she is crazy. Y'all, I'm not even I'm not even joking you. One day on a Zoom after January 6th, she was laughing. I get on the Zoom and I'm crying. That's one thing. Two, she said, yeah, my daughter doesn't really like our YouTube channel. Your daughter? How old is your daughter? Like 13. Girl, that is not our key audience. What? <laughs> What? Why are you giving me advice from your daughter? That's crazy, right? And then they would talk about these like stories about previous jobs. Just very unprofessional and tacky. And I'm pretty sure I could have sued, but honestly, what's, what's, what's the point, you know? So anyways, my mom passes away prior to all of this, like in November, and that's one thing I will say, November 2019, my mom passed away while I was working, while I was at work, I got the phone call. And one thing I'm gonna say is they pulled through for me. They really did. Like they got me on the first plane out. They got me car service. They really did take care of me. You know, I really appreciate what they did for me. I'll forever be grateful for that. But they didn't have to do me the way they did me on the way out child so long story short <laughs> candy oh well i just said her name she's here and we do not click but for obvious reasons i don't click with people that demean me or belittle me or you know condescendingly you know try to give me advice direction etc i just do not work well with that and also like you're coming at me with crazy ideas 
that require an agency or like more people, more money, more resources. And then mad that there's no, that it's not happening. Well, lady, you, you know what we're working with here and it's COVID. What are you talking about? <laughs> Literally doesn't care. I end up having a medical emergency where I have to go to the hospital via ambulance because I have a panic attack. Largely due to this job, mind you. Um, I also worked when I had COVID, mind you, which was illegal, but I did. I worked while I had COVID because they expected me to. So long story short, we bury my uncle, Uncle Thomas. Literally days after that, I get a text from my boss in LA. And he's like, hey, um, we need to meet on Friday. Now, anytime you get a text or an email that says, we need to meet on Friday, that means you getting fired. That's just industry knowledge. Like, you immediately know that's, that's the end for you. So I take the meeting and then he fires me. So I get fired after I bury my uncle. And it's a while goes by. I don't get a call or a text from Tamron or anything. She finally texts me and says, oh, you know, there's some certain things that are out of my control. Girl, the name of the show is your name. You can't defend me. You know what the work I do. And you know my work ethic, etc. They're talking about we want to go in a, a different direction. Well, baby, why after I get fired is the social media strategy three years later the exact strategy that I created? The exact. To a T. It's mine. All of it. I would say 85% of what they do now is what I did. I hired the two people that still work there today. Yeah. And the T is, is they said different direction, child. Next thing I know, not only did the executive producer get fired, that fired me. Oh, and by the way, she, she didn't have the balls to fire me. She had to get somebody else to do it. I was like, girl, you're weak. So weak. And I'm almost done, guys. Then <laughs> the executive that fired me also got fired. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, the gag. <laughs> the gag is. Then the final dagger, the final dagger was my executive producer reaches out to me on LinkedIn and adds me. I said, girl, good night. We are not friends. We will never be friends because you know what you did. But the fact that she just tried to ignore what happened and add me without even reaching out and saying, hey, sorry about what happened. It was out of my control. Just make something up. You know what I'm saying? Make something up, girls. It is not that hard. But anyway, I'm so grateful that I actually got fired because I ended up getting a job after that that I got, was making 185000 even though it turned out to be a crazy job, too. But it was like my highest paying job ever. And then after that, I started my own business. And now I'm doing influencer marketing. If it wouldn't have been for that, then I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I am grateful. Thank you for firing me. I'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know what you guys think of this crazy story.